Hello everyone! Today I'm going to do a beginner's guide or an introductory video to Kerbal Space Program or KSP. Now, Kerbal Space Program is a spaceflight simulation game with a very, very realistic rendition of physics. So realistic in fact that even Elon Musk plays it. It was released by Squad in 2011 and its first public version was 0.7.3. It is now available for PC, Mac, Xbox One and the PS4. A sequel for the game is currently being developed by Squad and the release date is 2021 because by then KSP will be 10 years old. The in-game creatures are green humanoid aliens called Kerbals and they look like this and they live on the Earth-like planet of Kerbin. There are two types of spacecraft that you can build in the game. First, there are space planes which are built in the space plane hangar. Inside the space plane hangar we have the parts list. Currently, I'm in the fuel tanks uh, section. We have the Kerbals list, which I showed you earlier. We have the switch editor button. And we also have the action group list. There are also rockets which you can build and uh, they are built in the vehicle assembly building. It is very similar to the space plane hangar. We have the parts list. The action group list, the Kerbals list, and the switch editor button. Both of the spacecraft types are controlled by the QWEASD keys. The action groups that I mentioned earlier are activated by pressing on-screen buttons. For example, if I press the abort action group, I will decouple the command pod from the actual rocket in case of an emergency. For example. And now I can safely extend my parachutes to land. That explosion was the remains of the rocket. And now it touched down safely. Now, earlier on, I mentioned Kerbin, the planet that the Kerbals live on. This is how it looks like. It is part of the Kerbal Solar System. The Kerbal Solar System includes more planets than Kerbin. For example, we have Moho, which is the closest planet to the Sun. It looks like this. It's, it's very brown. We also have another planet. It is the Kerbal equivalent of Venus, and it is called Eve. It looks like this and has one natural satellite, a moon, and its name is Gilly. It is brown just like Moho. We also have Kerbin, we mentioned it earlier. Here it is with its two natural satellites, the Mun and Minimus. The Mun looks like our moon and the minimus looks like mint ice cream next to Kerbin we have Juna it is a Kerbal equivalent of Mars due to its red color it also has one natural satellite called Ike it sort of looks like the moon or our moon then we have uh, another planet called a dress. It sort of looks like a gilly and moho, but it's not. It also looks a bit like the moon because of its color. And I think it's supposed to represent the asteroid belt between uh, Mars and Jupiter in our solar system. Then we have the one and only gas giant, Jewel, it has the most moons that a planet in the Kerbal system has, five moons, that, that's a lot. And finally we have the last planet, Elu, it is supposed to represent Pluto, and uh, personally I see the resemblance because it looks like it's ice, and uh, Pluto looks like it's frozen. 
Now there are also tiny celestial bodies called asteroids. For example, if we focus on Kerbin, we may see asteroids. They appear as unknown objects and you can track them. See, if they get too close to your planet and they might crash, you can send out a specially made vessel to capture them and send them out of the Kerbal system. Now, time for some interesting facts. Squad released two expansions for the game, making history which adds historic parts to the game. For example, this three-man Soyuz capsule is part of the Making History expansion. They also released Breaking Ground, which adds robotic parts to the game, like this robotic hinge, which can go like this. It's pretty nice. On every planet and moon, there are hidden Easter eggs. Examples, examples include the squad monoliths on Kerbin and the Inland Space Center, which is a callback to the old Space Center in version 0.7.3 that I mentioned earlier in the video. Also, there is a new Armstrong Memorial on the Moon, Kerbin's Moon, that I also mentioned earlier. I mentioned a lot of stuff earlier. In conclusion, the game is really, really fun and is sort of educational because of its rendition of physics and because it introduces concepts like Delta V, which is basically how much fuel and power we have. I recommend you play it for yourself to see how awesome it is. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you next time. Also, stay tuned for the next Kerbal Space Program video I will make, which is about the new 1.10 update of the game, Shared Horizons. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!